My dad grew up uh, in a family for whom music was, was equivalent to community and family. So he grew up playing in a family orchestra. He came out of this place where everybody could play, everybody could play something, um, everybody could probably play a lot of things, and it didn't matter whether you were a classically trained anything or you had just picked up a recorder for the first time. You should be able to sit down and enjoy this, this, um, this communal experience, this very human experience. I think he felt that music was the great equalizer and his passion was in making opportunities happen where people could experience exactly that. How do you, what does it mean to play music together, to feel part of something larger than myself? Well, here we are in the midst of this really wonderful collection of instruments, uh, instrumentarium, as Mark calls them, on the western prow of Building 6, which is at the western perimeter of the Masmoka campus, 16 acres in downtown North Adams. As we were planning this building, we were working with really well-known artists, James Terrell and Laurie Anderson and Jenny Holzer. And at some point, it was probably over a beer, Mark pulled me aside and said, Terrell and Laurie and Jenny, we know that. What about Schoenbeck? And I said, oh, that's a great idea, except we know nothing about how to take care of instruments. And he shot right back, if you'll do that and give permanent space, good space, uh, I'll move to North Adams and become your curator. Gunnar Schoenbeck, um, spiritual father, grandfather figure for me. I, I never met him, but uh, he all but literally <laughs> spoke to me through his instruments. It was my honor to uh, have a large part in saving those instruments, um, uh, bringing them down here to North Adams, and then uh, repairing, restoring, um, and then finally co-curating a wonderful exhibit where every day, essentially, the signs on the wall say, please, touch the exhibit. I've built a, a lot of instruments on commission. My favorite commissions are the, are the big works designed for communities, designed to be in big spaces uh, that can be played by lots of people at once. Instruments that elicit wonder and delight from all ages. There's almost no public building that couldn't house in some capacity, large or small, a wonderfully immersive, powerful music making, sound making, community making space. I saw Gunnar creating these, these opportunities for people to enter, um, enter this musical fantasy land. And I also saw him observant of people's hesitation. So what does it mean to, to go and bang on a drum when you've been told not to hit things, right? What does it mean to, to scream and shout when you've told to be, you need to be quiet here? Um, what does it mean to, to make a sound on something when you've been told that's not for you, you don't know how to make a sound, that's, that's noise. What are you doing making all that noise? Cut out the racket. And I watched over the years many, 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 many people uh, make this leap of faith somehow with this, you know, little whimsical curly-haired creature um, that was my dad, they felt safe enough to take a chance and, oh, okay, I'm going to make a little noise. I don't know, this feels really weird, but I'm going to try it anyway and see what happens. What I really love about it is, particularly in this beautiful building that we're in, which is full of you know, highly refined work by artists who are masters of their craft and trade, there's this moment here at the end, this light-filled western perimeter of the site when uh, the tables get turned and the experts become the visitors all of a sudden and it goes from experiencing work that comes at you from uh, outside to making work, making music, expressing one's own self. And it's an interesting threshold because we spend a lot of time telling people don't touch, don't play. And here, of course, all that's turned on its head. Uh, it's more than participatory, I think it's, it's, it's uh, spiritual liberation. 
it gets right to the core of why is creativity important to society as a whole. And I think it gets down to, without it, we're dead. I mean, quite literally. I happen to be a huge optimist because I have deep confidence that human beings will figure their way out of this pickle, but it takes creativity. <laughs> It takes work, it takes thought and experimentation and the willingness to get up every day and try something new. And I think this kind of work, these kinds of instruments uh, invite that, obviously in a very playful way, in a setting that's secure and interesting and stimulating, but uh, that kind of just like hard get up and try it again and create a new uh, is something that I think is fundamentally endemic to human beings and it's what makes being a human pretty interesting. I'm not afraid of uh, questions of importance. Is this important? Is this, is this music or are people just banging on things? I love those questions. Bring, bring them on. Because um, just handing somebody a simple tool to play a simple instrument and giving them simply permission well, they do the rest. And the curmudgeon vanishes. The skeptic, well, the skeptic can move on to things that need skepticism. Homemade music, homemade delight. Skepticism is wasted on such things. <laughs>